We're getting our first look at surveillance video. Police say shows a teenager right after he killed a woman on a Carlsbad trail. Help them. So I'm, I'm about to cry. A desperate plea from loved ones after an outbreak of COVID cases <clears throat> at Donovan Prison and a touching permanent tribute to a San Diego veteran who is the oldest living survivor of Pearl Harbor. ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. A judge is allowing the public to know the name of the North County teen accused of killing a woman on a Carlsbad trail. Good afternoon, I'm Lindsay Pena in for Kimberly Hunt. 17 year old Haloa Bodet denied the allegations in court today. As ABC 10 News reporter Jennifer Kastner learned, detectives have surveillance video of him leaving the crime scene. On Tuesday, a virtual hearing for the teen suspected of stabbing Lisa Thorborg on Hops Grove Trail in Carlsbad on Thanksgiving week. The judge ordered that his face be blurred, but said his name could be revealed, 17-year-old Haloa Bodet. A detective told the judge his DNA was found on the victim, and there's surveillance video of him running away from the murder scene. Prosecutors say this surveillance image shows him running barefoot on the street away from the park at 11.25 a.m. the day she died. We feel that she was... Uh... Or she died at about 11, 10 a.m., so that's about 15 minutes after she was murdered. Other surveillance camera images captured the teen on the same trail in the days after the murder. He's walking on the same trail um, where the victim was found. Detectives say a few days later he was arrested for prowling on the trail, and once taken into custody, a sample of his DNA was taken, which they say matched the male DNA found on the victim's shorts. Detectives also say a pair of flip-flops that were believed to be his were discovered near Thorborg. His defense attorney argued that the victim may have picked up the flip-flops, which is how she got the DNA on her. The defense added that he has no history of violence and there's no motive behind the attack. The judge decided to allow Allow the case to move forward. The teen is required to remain in custody. Jennifer Kastner, ABC 10 News. A readiness hearing is scheduled for January 25th. We're following some breaking news in the South Bay where there has been a deadly crash at the border. We're still working to get some details, but this happened around 2.30 at the San Ysidro crossing on the American side. There's no word yet how many people were in the car or if anyone else was hurt. We will update this story as soon as we get more information. California Secretary of State Alex Padilla will fill the Senate seat being vacated by Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Governor Gavin Newsom made that announcement today. Padilla will be California's first Latino senator. Newsom had been under pressure by some to appoint another black woman to the seat, which won't be up for re-election until 2022. And just in, Governor Newsom is appointing San Diego Assemblywoman Shirley Weber as the new Secretary of State, becoming the first black woman to hold that position. President-elect Joe Biden says the coronavirus relief package passed by Congress yesterday is just the first step. In an address to the nation today, Biden said he will put forward a plan early next year to help more. We'll need more help to fully distribute the vaccine. We're going to need more testing in order to be able to open our schools. We need more funding to help firefighters and police, many of whom are being laid off as I speak. Biden also urged Americans to follow all coronavirus precautions during Christmas, and he slammed President Trump for his lack of response to the government hack attributed to Russia. Tacked on to the coronavirus stimulus bill is new legislation tackling one of the most controversial practices in health care, surprise medical bills. That's when you go to the hospital or have an elective procedure and then later find out that some of the doctors or facilities were out of network, meaning you could owe tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now here's what's most impactful about the legislation. Patients would no longer get those surprise out of network bills for emergency care or for a planned procedure. They will instead be billed an in network rate. Out of network providers would have to give patients a heads up on estimated charges at least three days. Air ambulance companies would also not be able to charge more than in network costs. Ground ambulance was not included. Insurance and providers have to go to arbitration to work out the final payment. It's a complex solution that advocates say could end up costing Americans more in the long run. So a mediation process that some states have put in place, um, but research has shown that it increases the likelihood um, that consumers face higher premium costs on the back end. The Coalition Against Surprise Medical Bills had been pushing for policies that, in their simplest form, 
would have essentially made in and out of network rates the same, savings that in part would have funded community health centers. Not only is that approach the cleanest way of dealing with this, but it also saves the patients and taxpayers the most money. It was going to save $25 billion over 10 years. The group plans to continue to push for more terms around that arbitration process to prevent abuse driving up costs. None of the new surprise medical bill legislation takes effect until January of 2022. Now, stimulus checks will come faster than COVID-19 vaccines for most Americans. Dr. Anthony Fauci said by the end of March or early April, he expects the vaccines to be available to the general public. He also said the process could take up to four months to reach everyone who wants a vaccine. RJD has failed, you know, to do their part in taking care of our loved ones. An outbreak of cases at Donovan Prison has family members of those inside scared. As ABC 10 News reporter Adam Rakusin explains, they're calling on the state to protect their loved ones or release them. My husband is, you know, um, he has an underlying condition, stage four cirrhosis. I would hate for him to pass away because of COVID. Frustration, oh, anger, fear, just some of the emotions Mary Estrada is feeling. Her husband, Robert, is an inmate at the Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility. He called me back on the 18th to let me know that he had tested positive for COVID. That was the last time Mary's heard from him. I'm about to cry. It's just, um, this is so disheartening, you know. The number of cases at the facility has exploded this month. Numbers from the state show there are 600 active cases in custody. That's more than 16% of the prison's current population. Of the confirmed cases, 448 of them are new in the past 14 days. The CDCR says they are immediately responding with coordinated efforts around testing and contact tracing, along with isolation and quarantine measures to migrate the spread. But it's not just the prison with concerning numbers. Jails and prisons and detention centers, these are going to be hot spots uh, for for rapid transmission. Bartis Vakili is a senior staff attorney for the ACLU Foundation of San Diego and Imperial Counties. This week, the organization filed a California Public Records Act request looking for information on the surge of COVID-19 cases in San Diego County jails. The ACLU says the number of active COVID-19 cases at county jails has more than doubled from the end of November to the end of last week. For everybody's good, for everybody's safety. Uh, we're hoping for a very quick and rapid reduction in the populations of these, of these facilities. Back at the prison, Mary says families are worried and know the first COVID-related death at the facility happened Monday. They need to release. Release them. Adam Rakusin, ABC 10 News. State numbers also show 179 employees at Donovan have active cases. Corrections officials say four gyms at the facility are being used to isolate positive patients from others. The news feed starts with a massive number showing that we are still very much in the thick of the pandemic. That number, 18 million. That is how many cases the U.S. has seen, according to Johns Hopkins. Also, COVID hospitalizations set a new record on Monday. Research continues into the COVID vaccine as it is being given out. The U.S. looking into why a handful of people have had allergic reactions to Pfizer's vaccine. The new study will include hundreds of people with histories of severe allergic reactions. Now, more Americans appear willing to get the COVID vaccine now that it's in use. A new USA Today Suffolk University poll found that 46% of people say that they want the vaccine as soon as they can get it. You look back in October, that number, same poll, 26%.